For those of you who don't know, I'm Maggie, and today's video is all about the app called Copilot. Now, I know at the beginning of the year, a lot of people are trying to get their finances in order. You really wanna have an understanding of what your financial goals are, or maybe how much you're spending, or maybe you've never ever set up a formal budget, and this is the time when you wanna do it. Toward the end of last year, I discovered this app, and I know that I mentioned it in a favorites video, and I kept getting a lot of questions about it. Like, hey, I downloaded it on your recommendation. How do you use this thing? So I figured I would just put together one whole review of this app because A, I believe in it that much, and B, I thought it would be really helpful to you that have downloaded it and maybe want to see how I use the app and why I think it's so great. So if you've never heard of Copilot before, what it is is an overall financial standing tracker, but it also tracks your income and expenses on an individual level. And it really displays everything in such a user-friendly way. Like you completely understand what all of the screens are as soon as you download it. I do want to quickly off the bat tell you that this is a paid app. It costs $8.99 per month, or you can subscribe annually and it would cost you seven $70 for the year. They do have a 14 day free trial. So if you want to get it, try it out, not commit upfront, that's totally fine. Also, I have a code in the description box that you can use to get your first month free. Now I'm not affiliated with them. This video is not sponsored. This is literally just the code that every person gets when they download the app. You would get a free month. I would get a free month but no pressure there. Just wanted to tell you that that was an option. And so I think another good starting place would be to go ahead and compare this to Mint because I know you're probably thinking, what the heck, why is this paid app worth it when Mint is a free app that I can use to do pretty much the exact same thing? And you're not wrong, but I used Mint for years and years and loved it. The thing that was so frustrating about it though is that it's really high maintenance. Like you would have to go in and I would have to recategorize my expenses all the time and I felt like creating new budgets wasn't very intuitive. I'll get into how Copilot is very smart about that and helps you set realistic budgets, which Mint didn't really offer in my opinion. And also Mint advertised to you so much and it made me like question everything every single time I logged in. For instance, insurance. And it would be like, we noticed your insurance payment could be a lot lower. Like here's some other options from insurance companies. And really what those were, were like paid ads. That part was kind of annoying. And because Copilot is a paid app, they don't have to work with advertisers. So you get a completely ad free experience when you're using it, which I really, really enjoy. But the one thing where Mint does win over Copilot is that they do have a desktop version. And at the time that I'm filming this, which is January of 2022, Copilot does not have a desktop version, which I know will turn a lot of you off, but they have an export feature that we'll talk about in a few minutes. So stay tuned. All right, the way that I've decided to organize this video is by screen in the Copilot app. And the first screen that you'll see listed by default is the accounts app. And I love this one because it gives you an overall picture of your net worth at the very top of the screen which is kind of a hard number to come by if you're trying to track everything on an individual basis. Now, I will say this with the caveat that if you don't link all of your accounts, it's not giving you a super accurate picture of your total net worth. I did feel comfortable linking all of my information in, so I have all of my credit cards linked in, my actual checking account, and then all of my investment accounts as well. Now, one thing to note is that I do have a Target red card, and for whatever reason, it makes me re-verify that all the time. Like every week or so. So I just stopped verifying it. So that is the one thing that I left out. Maybe it's just a little buggy with that particular card. Now I mentioned at the top of this video that this app is super user friendly. And one great feature that you can do on the accounts tab is exclude any account that you don't wanna see activity for. So recently I was added to my parents' bank account, but since I never use that money, I don't touch that money, I'm just on it for safety reasons, I, excluded that from my view so that their money is not factoring into my net worth. So if you have a similar situation, you have the power to completely customize your view on the accounts page. So the next screen that shows up by default is the investment screen. If you chose to link all of your different investment accounts, so how this screen is organized is at the top, you can see your estimated returns on your investments for a specified amount of time, or you can look at the live balance of your investments over a certain period of time. And as you keep moving down the screen, you can see the top movers. You can also see the return on your individual accounts. And then you can see the individual holdings of all of your investments. So it is very insightful. But for me, because I'm investing for the long haul, I don't pay a lot of attention to this screen. I just kind of move it to the very end of my dashboard views, which you can do because you can reorder how everything appears. Well, I like to know it's not really what I'm concerned with on a daily basis. But if you are, 
There you go. The next screen is the transaction screen, and this is hands down my most viewed screen on this app. So as you can probably imagine by the name of this screen, this is where you view all of your transactions. And I love the filter features that Copilot offers here because you can filter by account, you can filter by category. So is it groceries, shopping, pets? You can filter by month. And then you can sort all of your transactions by date. So all of mine are sorted by date so that I see my most recent transactions toward the top. And this same screen shows you a month in review at the end of every month. So it shows you your total income for the month, the total amount spent, and then it goes into even more detail and tells you the amount spent per category for that month. So a very, very insightful dashboard. So I realize that I keep calling these screens dashboards dashboards, which is a little confusing because there actually is a screen called dashboard. So just bear with me. So this dashboard screen is another one that I use all the time because this is where you look at real time information for that specific month and how you're trending. So the big box at the top shows you how much money you have left out of your total budget holistically. So while you do set your budgets by category, it totals all of those up and says, okay, how is your spending looking? And it even has a smart feature where it's kind of predicting how you're trending while it's factoring in recurring expenses that you have yet to pay. Are you overspending in certain categories? But then as you scroll down, you'll see the next section is the to review section. And this is for those of you that really wanna keep an eye on your spending because this makes you mark and review every single transaction that is made on any card within your bank account as long as you've linked all of those things. So this can really bring awareness to how much you spend if you're somebody that has no idea what that number is per month. And this is also where I tend to catch catch any categorizations that may seem off. So for instance, in this example, we bought Nash some more dog food. So that was from Chewy.com. And this app recognized that that was for the pets category. So I can go ahead and mark that as reviewed. But then I also bought some scents from Pura. So rather than marking that as shopping, I actually wanna mark that for the home because that's like something that we use at home. So you can recategorize that and you can actually set it to remember that going forward. And it will always categorize it as home moving forward. If you keep scrolling down, you see your budgets and where you stand against all of those budgets. So the ones where you're over will be shown first. The ones where you're getting really close will be shown second. Then you can see your upcoming charges. And this information is pulled from the recurring tab that we'll talk about in a minute. You can see your overall income for the month against the prior month so that you can see where you're trending. Are things looking better, worse? I think that this screen is also where you will keep track of any fraudulent charges. Since every single charge comes through for your review, if you know you didn't shop at some certain retailer or you would never spend that amount of money on something, this is a really good screen to help you catch that because you're reviewing every single transaction that comes through. The next tab is the categories. And at the very top of this screen, you're going to see your total budget number and how much you've spent so far. But it's the part below that's actually the most insightful and that's where you're actually setting all of your budgets. So here you can see that you set each budget by category. Now let's say that the default category that it comes with based on your past transactions aren't all encompassing. You can see at the bottom area, you can add a category and each category has a color associated with it and an emoji. So you can kind of customize these for yourself. Then you'll also see a button at the bottom that's called rebalance budget. And if you click that, be sure that you do so toward the end of the month because that budget is only going to rebalance for your existing spending for that month. This is really cool if you like to view your budget holistically and you don't necessarily care how much you're spending per month because what this is doing is analyzing your spending for the whole month and reallocating the dollars to create a more realistic budget. That's just a feature I don't use a lot, but I wanted to throw it out there if you thought that was cool or if you're not very used to budgeting and you do want to learn to set more realistic budgets, that's what the goal is with that. The last screen that you have is the recurring feature. And I think this is so cool. And this is where this app does it all for me because I used to have a separate app called Truebill and that was to monitor my subscriptions. And then I had another app called Mint and that was monitoring my transactions, but I wasn't viewing both of those things together. And this is where this app truly brings it all together and allows you to see everything in one place. Place. So you can see your recurring expenses, which it goes and analyzes all of your expenses and puts this together for you. Like you do not have to do any of the legwork here, which is awesome. So I know each month I should expect our home alarm system, Spotify, my Peloton membership, all of our utilities. That's pretty much it for me. If you maybe are missing a transaction here, or maybe one of those transactions is new and you know it's going to be recurring, but there's no historical data that shows that, you can go ahead and manually add that here too. They 
may even track recurring expenses that are biannually or quarterly. And I think that's really cool. Our pest control people come spray once every six months. So it knows in May, our pest person is coming back and it's gonna cost about this much. So in my May budget, it's gonna go ahead and account for that. It is so smart. And then once those things are paid each month, you'll see a little check mark in the top corner of a box and that will show you, okay, great. This one was completed on the third. And that brings me to one more point is that not only does it list out all of the transactions and how much they'll cost, but it also gives you an estimated date when that will be paid. So now that we've gone through all of the screens, I do wanna just point out other notable features that this app has, the notifications. So for me, I turned virtually all of them on. You can get bank fee alerts, big expense alerts, budget updates, credit utilization alerts. That one's super important if you didn't know because your credit utilization on a monthly monthly basis factors into your overall credit score. So if you're trying to buy a house or a car or something and you really wanna monitor your credit, I would definitely turn that one on. But another really cool one is the rollovers feature. I don't put this to use often unless I have a goal, like I wanna shop a lot less. So in a month where I do maybe do more shopping than is normal, I can have all that additional money built up over time. And then you have the freedom to spend because you saved in those prior months, if that makes sense. Not only does it add to your budgets if you have excess funds, if you overspent in that category, it's gonna give you negative funds because one-off expenses tend to occur in one to two categories per month for me. I don't want to start the next month with a negative balance because that just like throws me off. So psychologically, that one's not for me. But you do have the option to to enable that for certain categories. Just wanted to throw that out there. Another big feature that I don't take advantage of is that you can also link your Venmo account and your Amazon. But since I pay for Amazon transactions with my credit card, I'm already seeing those come through, but they're just listed as Amazon. So I kind of have to remember what I bought. If you're linking your Amazon account, it actually lists the product that you bought so that it can categorize it better. For your Venmo transactions, what I try to do is always transfer my balance over to my bank account so that I'm not paying money out of my Venmo balance because then I'm tracking the money outflows from my bank account when I pay somebody, and then I'm tracking all of my money inflows through that transfer to my bank account. That's how I like to do it personally. I think it's way easier to keep track of your spending that way than paying out of your balance and trying to figure out the difference or going through your Venmo and logging everything. But that's what that is trying to account for is so that if you do pay out of your balance, it's showing that as a cash outflow. And it's also reading the descriptions in your Venmo charges and trying to categorize it for you. So again, super great features that I don't take advantage of because I'm super anal about just logging it myself. <laughs> That's just me. So while this app does not have a desktop version now, don't freak out. There is an export feature where you can take the transactions from the entire year, the entire month, whatever you're analyzing, and you can email it straight to yourself or you can send it to your phone and it sends it to you in an Excel file. So most people could use that in like Google Sheets, even if you don't have Excel. Hopefully if you were curious about the app and you were having hesitations, you weren't sure if you wanted to spend the money, I really hope that this has been helpful. I think that it has been such a game changer in helping me track my expenses and my income. If you're interested, again, I'll have that referral link in the description box below where you can get a month free. So if you like this video, then like it. Stick around, subscribe, join the community, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.